support machining uses a pattern as the center line of the port. This pattern is used as a drive curve to define the cross sections for the toolpath and the tool axis. So the first thing we need to do is create this pattern. So we're going to take all the surfaces defining the port into surface modeling and in this case the main port is defined by one closed surface so because the surface is closed in one direction we can use the create spine command to give us the center line of that surface once we have the spine we can convert it into wireframe and then in this case just change the color to red to make it more visible. Now for the opening of the port we're going to repeat the same procedure by selecting a, a lateral on that curve and then using the create spine command again to give us the center line. Right click on the center line and then convert to wireframe as before. So now we're left with two separate wireframe pieces in the center of the port and we're going to join those together to make one continuous piece by using the append command. So that gives us a center line for the complete port but you'll notice that at the moment the center line is not smooth and we need to smooth it out to make it usable for the port machining. The first thing we're going to do to try and smooth that out is to use the tangent editor to free the tangent and the magnitude across all the points. That has got rid of most of the unevenness but we still need to repoint the curve with less points to give us a nice smooth finished pattern. So now we can go back to the main panel window and select our curve that we created in the surface modeling and we're going to insert that into our pattern. Now we're going to give you, show you an example of using this pattern in the port machining. Uh, in this case we're going to be using spiral finishing and we simply select the pattern in the top right hand corner with the, from the drop down list and when we apply the toolpath the port machining will look at this pattern, this drive curve that we created earlier and it will use that to define the toolpath profiles perpendicular to this pattern. It will also guide the tool axis. So there we have the finished toolpath. Now we're going to animate that so we can see how that looks and how the tool axis motion behaves. Okay, so when it comes to doing the second port, you'll notice that it's not made up of one continuous surface like the first port, and it's made up of multiple surfaces. So we cannot use the create spine technique to give us the, the approximate center line. So in this example, we still need to take the surfaces into the surface modeling, but we're going to use a work plane. Uh, I can look down the top from the top of the port, position a work plane in the center roughly, and align the work plane so it is in line with the approximate flow of the port. 
Then we're going to select the surfaces and create an oblique through them. That will, the result of this command will give us two curves, one at the top of the port and one at the bottom of the port. From these two curves we can create a surface from se separate laterals and then we're going to add an intermediate lateral halfway along the surface. This intermediate lateral is going to be converted into wireframe and this will give us the approximate centre line of the port that we require. Again we're going to smooth this curve out just to get rid of any unevenness which could affect the toolpath quality and then repoint it as before. So, but, but before we take this curve back into power mill we just want to check that we have enough clearance around this curve between the curve and the edges of the port. So using the command to create a line from the shortest distance between two objects we can quickly and easily measure the distance from the curve to the edge of the port to make sure our tool diameter can fit inside successfully. Once we're happy with that we can take again take the wireframe center line back into power mill and create a pattern as before and insert this wireframe into the pattern. So now we're going to go through, finally we're going to go through the same procedure as before and simply select this pattern uh, and machine the opposite port. So there we have two examples of how to quickly and easily create the centerline patterns that is required for port machining.